Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at Module 3, Lesson 9, and we will continue solving one digit times two, three, and four digit multiplication problems. We will use that partial product method that we have been using in recent days, but we're also going to start using the standard algorithm, the way that most adults solve problems like this. So we'll be showing each problem both ways. That way you get some practice with both methods and eventually you can decide which method is most comfortable for you. But for today, we'll try it both ways. So make sure you have your problem set and your pencil, and let's go ahead and get started. So for 1a, we are going to solve this problem using partial products and the standard algorithm. So you'll notice that in the box, there's not a lot of room for me to show what problems I am solving, the partial product problems. So uh, what I'm going to do is instead of writing those parts off to the right this time, I'm going to flip them over to the left. It really doesn't matter. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So for 34 times 4, I know that I'm going to be multiplying 4 times both parts of 34. So I'm going to show those steps off to the left, as I said. So I'm going to do 4 times the 4, which I know is 16. And I'm going to be doing 4 times that 3. That's really a 30. So 4 times 30, 4 times 3 is 12, with my 0 makes 120. Careful, my zeros look a lot like 6's on here. When I go ahead and add those partial products together, I get a 6 and a 3 and a 1. The standard algorithm is going to solve the same parts, but we're going to see some carrying rather than doing multiple steps down below the problem. So again, we're going to start by doing 4 times 4 in our ones place. We're not going to list off to the side what we're doing, but ones times ones, or four times four, which we know is 16. But instead of writing 16, I'm going to write the six ones, and I'll carry the 10 over to the tens place. Then I'm going to do four times that three, and this time I'm going to take a shortcut and just think of it as a three. And that's okay because I'm going to be writing the answer in the tens place. So four times three is 12, don't forget to add on that 1 that we carried up at the top. 12 plus 1 more makes 13. I'll write the 3. And the 1 from the tens place of 13 is going to come over. We'd like to carry it, but there's nothing to hold it. So ah, it's going to fall down into that hundreds place. And I have a habit of crossing off those carried digits once I have added them on. You'll notice that both of these answers are exactly the same. They should be. If they're not the same, we've done something wrong, and we need to go back and try again. So let's take a look at letter B. Again, partial products and standard algorithm. So I'll set up my partial products off to the left side, just because that's where I have room. And I'm going to be solving 3 times 4 which is 12. 3 times that 2, that's really a 20. 3 times 20 is 60. And then 3 times that 2, that's really 200. And 3 times 200 is 600. Ooh, let's make a better zero there. So, there's my 6. 600, that says. Adding it together, we get a 2. 6 plus 0 plus 1 is 7. And 6 plus nothing is 6. So I think my product is 672. We'll try to get that same answer using the standard algorithm. Remember, this time we will carry instead of putting all the lines of information down below. So we'll start with 3 times 4, which is 12. I write the 2. I carry a 1 to the tens place. 
I'll multiply 3 times the 2 tens. 3 times 2 tens is 6 tens. Plus 1 more 10 will be 7 tens. I've used that, so I'll cross it off. 3 times 2 hundreds. 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 hundreds. Notice, same answer. Just takes up less space on the page. Let's take a look at one more example together and then you can try a few without me in a little bit. Uh, let's come down. We're going to skip to letter C on number two. There's one thing I want to take a look at here that's a little bit different. So we're told this time to use the standard algorithm. So no need for partial products unless you want to use that to check your answer. Standard algorithm, remember we'll be doing all of our work on one line here. No need to separate it. So I'll start with 9 times 4 in the ones place. 9 times 4 is 36. So I'm going to put my 6 and I'll carry the 3 to the tens place. Then I'm looking at 9 times 0 tens. 9 times 0 is 0. But what about that 3 up on top? Hmm. Before, when I carried a digit to the top, I added it on. And I will do the same thing here. Just because it's a 0 that we got doesn't mean we do things any different. So 9 times 0 was 0, plus 3 more is 3. Cross that off because I've added it on. And now I'll do 9 times my 3 hundreds. 9 times 3 is 27. I'm going to write down the 7, and I'll try to carry that 2 over to the thousands place. But since we don't have any thousands, that 2 is just going to uh, fall down into the thousands place. And let's go ahead and put our comma. 1, 2, 3, and there's the comma. So I think you'll be ready to try those on your own. But before we proceed, I'd like to go ahead and take a look at the next page and see how these problems are worded a little bit differently and take a look at a few word problems. So for number three, when it asks for the product of 7 and 86, that's asking you to multiply to get the answer. So you'll just figure out what 86 times 7 or 7 times 86 is, and you can use either the partial product method or the standard algorithm. Number four, nine times as many as 457 means nine times 457 or 457 times nine. Again, you could use the standard algorithm or partial products. Let's take a look at number five. We have Jashan wants to make five airplane propellers. He needs 18 centimeters of wood for each propeller. How many centimeters of wood will he use? Well, he needs 18 centimeters of wood, but he needs it five times. So this is just another example of one of these two-digit by one-digit multiplication problems. We'll put our 18 up on top and the 5 below. And I'm going to solve it using the standard algorithm. So I'll take my 5 times 8 which is 40. Here's my zero, and I'll carry that four to the tens place. Five times one of those tens is five tens. Add on four more tens, and I'm up to nine tens, or 90. So I think that my answer is going to be 90 centimeters of wood. If we take a look at number six, one game system costs $238. How much will four game systems cost? Four groups of 238. So $238 times four. Four times eight is 32. Carry three to the tens place. Four times that three tens. Hmm. That's 12 tens. 
plus three more tens makes 15 tens. I'll write the five. I'll carry the one. I'm going to cross out that three now that I've added it on already. Finally, we have four times two hundredths, four times two eight hundredths, plus one more hundred makes nine hundredths. So I think my answer is $952. And finally, you'll solve a problem with a small bag of chips weighs 48 grams. A large bag of chips weighs three times as much as the small bag. And you have to figure out how much seven large bags of chips will weigh. To solve this one, you'll need to figure out what three times as much as 48 grams is. Once you know that, that will tell you the weight of the large bag of chips. But then it says, how much will seven large bags of chips weigh? So whatever you get for that answer, you're going to need to figure out what seven of those is. So you'll take that number and multiply it by seven. We've got ourselves a two-step problem here. And that should be your answer. So I would like you to go ahead and complete any of the problems on the problem set that we did not do together and check your answer against the answer key. Happy solving!